Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Big Daddy Top Hat here. When it comes to the world of Street Fighter and the franchise's many games, there are countless iconic characters who Capcom have always allowed us to play as time and time again. Amongst these, there are even many selectable fighters who have been brought in over the years from the Final Fight series. A classic series of games that even exists within the same universe and timeline as the Street Fighter games. With the maiden entry in the series at one point even being test marketed as Street Fighter 89. The game was different enough to the 1987 Street Fighter game that a different name seemed appropriate. But this does not mean that Capcom would not forever keep the two series intrinsically linked, with characters regularly crossing over to the famous fighting game series since Street Fighter Alpha. Considering how many final uh, fighters that have been playable in Street Fighter, it is beyond criminal that the star of the franchise, Mike Hager, has never had the opportunity to fight on Capcom's grandest stand of them all. The lack of Big Daddy Mike as a selectable character in Street Fighter games has always perplexed me, particularly when we take into account that he is by far the most memorable character and that Capcom was so keen to bring the two scrawny lads over to the series, in the form of Cody and Guy. We already had Ken and Ryu, so why did we need more fighters of this ilk so rapidly? And all of this is without even mentioning that random final fight stage bosses and respawning enemy fodder would be involved in the World Warrior tournaments without Hagger ever becoming playable. Today though, we are going to explore the entire history of Mayor Mike Hagger's background, analysing every video game and media appearance that he has ever made, and make an attempt to get to the bottom of this mystery. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the mad story of Mike Hagger. Yeah. As already mentioned in this video previously, Mike Hager would first pop up back in 1989, in the awesome three-player side-scrolling beat-em-up simply known as Final Fight. Mike would appear in the game as a hard-as-nows but retired professional wrestler, now working in a new job role as the mayor of Metro City. Amusingly, life would imitate art just a few years later, when the WWF's Jesse the Body Ventura became the mayor of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. And as of today, Kane is the current reigning mayor of Knoxville, Tennessee, and Matt Morgan is acting as the current mayor of Longwood, Florida. As preposterous as pro wrestlers becoming mayors may seem, for some reason this crossover seems to happen frequently in the United States, with the voting public electing wrestling stars over career-long politicians. This bizarre phenomenon makes Big Mike currently more realistic than ever before. As for Mike's role in the story, as mayor of Metro City, he swore to diminish the ever-increasing crime rate after he won the election. Mike is highly successful in his new job at managing to successfully suppress the crime. However, after a while, his daughter Jessica was kidnapped by the Mad Gear gang, with the criminal syndicate's leader known as Belga wanting to use her to manipulate Mike. Rather than giving in to the gang's demands in this hostage situation, Mayor Mike decides to take the law into his own hands as he sets off on a quest with Jessica's boyfriend Cody and his friend Guy as they take to the streets to take on the Mad Gear gang themselves. While Cody and Guy are martial artists similar to Bimmy and Jimmy from the Double Dragon franchise with their placement in the game, Mike Hagar has a much more interesting fighting style, appearing as the first pro wrestler, I believe, as a playable fighter in beat em up history. Thus meaning that rather than utilising the usual generic martial arts nonsense, Big Mike could execute axe handles, drop kicks, splashes, power bombs, and more. He was certainly the most unique fighter in beat em ups up until this point, and broke the prototypical mould for heroes in such games. Before Middle Asian Mike, beat em up stars seemed to all be scrawny martial artists, so Mike was more than a breath of fresh air in the genre. In this classic arcade venture, if players unfortunately run out of credits, the game is notorious for its morbid continue screen, which if playing as Mike shows him tied to a chair with a bundle of dynamite on the table in front of him. Paired with this is a classic countdown encouraging players to insert a coin to continue. Seeing Mike like this feverishly blowing in a futile attempt to extinguish the lit fuse all adds to the tense situation, incentivising players to save handsome Mike with some more money. In a playthrough, after making it through many a level, eventually Mike and co get to face off against Belga and save Jessica from his clutches. At the end of the game, Mike embraces his daughter, admitting he was scared that he lost her like he did her mother, promising to never let anything bad happen to her ever again. 
Although there would be a final fight sequel, Hagger would keep to his word, at least for the second instalment, as Hagger has a different objective in this second beat-em-up. While Belga and the Mad Gear Gang may have been defeated, in this new adventure the Mad Gear Gang are back, and under new management being led by a man known as Retu. While Jessica is safe this time around, a similar situation unfolds with Guy's girlfriend Rena and her father being kidnapped instead. This all puts Mike in a tough spot, and neither Cody or Guy are available to help him this time around, with Cody and Jessica being out of the country on a vacation, and Guy himself being off on a training journey. The same training journey which is said to encompass his involvement as a playable fighter in Street Fighter Alpha. But fortunately for Mike, he is joined by additional help once again, in the form of Mackie, the sister of Guy's girlfriend, who also happens to be a skilled fighter, along with a gentleman known as Carlos Miyamoto, who is Hagger's combat understudy. The new trio travel the world fighting the Mad Gear Gang's operations, visiting several countries along the way, with Mike and co eventually defeating an old enemy, Relento, in Italy, where he informs them that the hostages are being held in Japan, but warns them that Retu is the most powerful man in the whole world. Eventually reaching Retu, Mike and co discover Rena and her father suspended from the ceiling via a rope, with an intense fight unfolding against this more than powerful foe within this courageous rescue attempt. Maki manages to kick Retu out of the window, leading to his death, which is similar to Belga's fate within the first entry. Maki happily reunites with her family, thanking Hagger and Carlos for their help. After these events, Rena writes to Guy informing him what had unfolded, with him writing back promising to return to Metro City soon. The final instalment of the classic Final Fight trilogy, released in 1995, would build on Mike's story further. The game obviously occurs after Retu's incarnation of the Mad Gear Gang has been wiped out, leading to a power vacuum within the criminal underworld. Multiple groups fight it out for supremacy, with an organisation known as the Skullcross Gang eventually becoming new top dogs. With Mike still serving as mayor, he gets an unexpected call from Guy, with an explosion suddenly rocking the city simultaneously. An individual known as Detective Lucia informs the mayor that a huge riot has broken out in his city centre. But before Hagar, Lucia and Guy even have the opportunity to properly address the situation, a stranger suddenly appears offering assistance, claiming to know what was going on. Hagar agrees to upset this man known as Dean's help, but threatens to grind him into dust if he is leading him into a trap. It is later revealed that Dean is a street fighter and the Skull Cross Gang murdered his family due to Dean refusing to join them, so he wants to do everything he can to avenge his loved one's deaths. This leads to the force and working together to rid the city of this new violent threat. Like in any beat em up, this sees Mike and his team brawling through the streets, doing their utmost to eradicate this syndicate eventually culminating with a showdown with the group's leader known as Black at the end of the game. Like previous adversaries of the city, the group are successful in assassinating Black, which was made possible by knocking him backwards into a high voltage transformer, killing him in an instant. This leads to an explosion causing the whole building to come down, but the group fortunately managed to escape. Mike's journey ends with him musing at it being part of his job to help rebuild the city after the building's destruction. But at least crime levels are suppressed once again for now. Now as we know, these three games would not be the end for the Final Fight franchise, so we can move forward with Mike Hagger's canon story soon. But before we go forward, we need to go backwards in his life a bit. As in 1993, Capcom would release the first entry in the Slam Masters series of games. These games cover a portion of Hagger's life before he was a mayor, but instead simply a professional wrestler. But before moving on, it's worth mentioning that when this all exactly occurred has confused many over time, as in the English translation of the games, Hagar is billed as the former mayor of Metro City, but the original Japanese plot states otherwise. In the first of these games, known as Muscle Bomber in Japan and Saturday Night Slam Masters internationally, Hagar is already a veteran professional wrestler by this point, nearing the end of his run with the game suggesting that Hagar was even a champion street fighter before he had ever stepped foot in a professional wrestling ring. In the game, Hagar is a famous and respected athlete, which is why he is now serving as two other Rising Stars mentors known as Biff Slamkovich and Gunlock, who both quickly showed enough promise that they would be signed by the Capcom Wrestling Association, 
which is abbreviated in the game as the CPWA. Ultimately, Mike's two trainees would end up becoming two of the top stars of the promotion, with Biff Slankovic becoming a respected babyface and arguably the star of the product, with Gunlock's relationship with Hagar becoming very strained. It is said that this was due to Gunlock deciding to make sexual advances towards Mike's daughter Jessica, with Jessica showing no interest, but the whole thing would result in him getting into a serious fight with her boyfriend Cody. Insanely though, this was not the end of it, as Gunlock would soon pull the same stunt again, this time annoying Mike himself, resulting in the pair getting into a major fight and an ongoing feud. In the game's Japan-only sequel known as Muscle Bomber Duo, the game would feature tag team wrestling, leading to Mike forming a tag team with Alexander the Greater, known as the Knuckle Busters, with the pairing competing for the tag team championships. In the final game in the series known as Ring of Destruction Slam Masters 2, Hagar helps defend the CPWA against the Blood Wrestling Alliance, a dark underground wrestling organisation who have emerged to take advantage of the promotion during a time of disarray after CPWA owner and top ranking wrestler Victor Ortega unexpectedly left the public eye. Ortega returns at the end of the game, but it is currently unknown who truly won this tournament within the Slam Masters canon. While not canon to the other games, Mike Hagger would also appear as a playable character within the 1993 NES game known as Mighty Final Fight, a game that offers a more comical chibi art style than any of the previous entries. This game's story follows the same premise as the original Final Fight, with the Mad Gear Gang kidnapping Jessica. However, in this satirical title, Belga has kidnapped Jessica to marry her, rather than simply blackmail the town's mayor. One small nuance of note though is that Belga is no longer in a wheelchair and has instead received cybernetic enhancements leading me to believe that this game is a sort of pseudo sequel to the original. As for mainline Final Fight games, after Final Fight 3, the franchise would return in 1999 with the release of Final Fight Revenge for the arcade and Sega Saturn. In this American-made Capcom game, beat-em-up action had been dropped in favour of Street Fighter style versus fighting. As for the game's story, Jessica has bloody disappeared again, following a set of riots in Metro City, and even Hagar's ending does not resolve what has happened to her. The Street Fighter 03 Secret Files book would later fill in the missing gaps, revealing that Hagar was indeed successful in rescuing Jessica following this game, but Jessica would end up leaving Metro City completely after splitting up with Cody who over time had developed a destructive addiction to fighting, landing him eventually in prison. As for Mike's daughter, she would study abroad in France. Earlier in the video, we established that during the events of Street Fighter Alpha, that Final Fight 2 was likely occurring simultaneously. But what for Hagar with some of the other games in terms of continuity and appearances? Will Hagar would actually go on to appear in both Alpha 2 and Alpha 3, but ridiculously not as an active competitor, but instead as an asset in the backgrounds of Guy's stage in both games, even putting Jay of the Mad Gear Gang in a headlock in one of the title's backdrops. Hagar's life would also receive a mention within Street Fighter 3, which as discussed on here many times before, is set in the latest time period in the Street Fighter series. Within Hugo's ending in Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, he forms a wrestling tag team with Slam Masters fighter Black Widow. In this ending, it also indicates that Hagger decided to return to wrestling after his period as a mayor. However, many people suggest that, that we take Street Fighter 3 endings with a pinch of salt, as many are pretty tongue-in-cheek. The final entry in the Final Fight series, known as Final Fight Street Wires, was released for the PS2 and original Xbox in 2006, and like Revenge before it, would also be developed in America by Capcom Production Studio 8. In this game, more time has passed by, and players this time around take control of Kyle Travers, Cody's younger brother. The game's plot follows Kyle searching for his captured brother, but Mike Hager eventually surfaces in the title too. Streetwise is set long after Mike's run as the mayor of Metro City, and now he has a more humble life running a gym known as Mike's Mats and Muscles, as well as a dock known as Mike's Maritime Maintenance. In Streetwise, Mike has actively chosen to live a more simple life, stating by this point most of Metro City's residents have forgotten he even exists. In the game, he becomes an aide of Cody's brother Kyle, teaching him various wrestling techniques and advising him to seek out Guy if he wants to learn more about Cody's whereabouts. Sadly, this game was so poorly received there has not been a new entry in the Final Fight series ever since, but that does not mean that a character as iconic as Mike has not continued to make notable appearances in other games over the years. 
In fact, he was planned to be a playable character in Capcom Fighting All-Stars, a game that Capcom would sadly cancel. However, some of the ideas would be recycled to produce the unpopular fighting game known as Capcom Fighting Evolution. For Evolution though, Hagar is not a playable character, but does pop up in the game if you complete the title plan as Alex from Street Fighter 3, where in Alex's ending you can see him wrestling Hagar. In Super Street Fighter 4, as we know, Hagar would still not appear in a mainline Street Fighter game as a playable character, even though he makes a whopping 5 separate cameos throughout this one, where he can be seen in stage backgrounds amongst other places throughout the experience. Hagar would make an appearance as an ally to the player in the Japan-only Namco Cross Capcom, and he would finally show up in a game where he could square off with at least some Street Fighter roster members in both Marvel vs Capcom 3 and Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3, where he fights using many of his moves from Final Fight, paired with some of Zangief's moveset. Completing the game with Hagar leads to a heartwarming ending where his career in politics skyrockets and he manages to become President of the United States, with Tony Stark serving under him as his Vice President and Captain America and Chris Redfield serving in his party alongside him. Wow. All of this is a much nicer ending to his towel than seeing him fade into obscurity. I guess in many ways in Streetwise, his amazing character was written as poorly as Luke Skywalker's in The Last Jedi. Both deserved far better. Hagar would return to the Marvel vs Capcom franchise in Marvel vs Capcom Infinite, in the game's bizarre story mode serving as the mayor of a location called New Metro City, a fused version of Metro City and New York even allying with Spider-Man in the process. He ends up getting captured by a terrorist organisation known as Aimbrella, a crossover between AIM from the Marvel Universe and Umbrella from the Resident Evil series. A cast of heroes manage to rescue him, discovering him locked in a containing room. Hacker joins up with the other goodies and after the final battle against Ultron Sigma, he resumes his mayor duties leading New Metro City. Hagger made an appearance in the cinematic trailer for Street Fighter Cross Tekken, being delivered a suplex by King, but sadly would not be playable in the game, but is once again reduced to a background asset. Also, while not playable in Street Fighter V, he would play a role in the game's story, where it's revealed that Hagger exonerates Cody, and Cody even succeeds him as the new mayor of Metro City. He also pops up in Lucia's story, where he informs them that the Mad Gear Gang are back and plotting to oppose the current mayor of Metro City. While that just about rounds up all of Mike Hagger's video game appearances, it is worth also mentioning that he also showed up in the dreadful American Street Fighter cartoon series in the episode titled Final Fight. What is it with Americans producing bad Final Fight content? In this one as usual, Jessica is kidnapped by the Mad Gear Gang, but Hagger in this one first decides to act like a responsible mayor and instead convinces Ken, Ryu, Guy and Cody to go rescue his daughter for him. At the end of the episode though, Mike does a run-in, kicking the door down of Belga's office unexpectedly, taking the law into his own hands by physically helping the lads rescue his daughter. So overall, that just about rounds up Mike Hagger's many appearances across the Capcom universe. I guess canonically, it kind of makes sense why he's not playable in any of the Street Fighter games, simply due to the fact that he's such a bloody busy man. Throughout his career, he seems pretty wrapped up in either professional wrestling, protecting Metro City from criminals, and even keeping a low profile running the gym in later life. I guess it was too tough on Mike to fit an appearance in as an active competitor within one of the World Warrior tournaments. Still though, this is just making sense of all of this from a story perspective rather than a marketing one. I have seen many speculate in the past that Capcom have actively chosen to leave him out of Street Fighter games to keep this complex story making semi-sense, while I've also witnessed other people claiming that Mike Hagger's fighting style and physique is far too similar to that of Zangief's to bother including both fighters in the games. But if that is the case, why would Capcom be happy to put so many karate bums in Street Fighter, some of which have very, very similar movesets to the likes of Ryu? So I guess that excuse doesn't actually make any sense at all. The lack of Hagar in the games as a playable fighter becomes even more confusing when we see how many times both Guy and Cody have been included characters who within the Final Fight series were basically Hagger's sidemen. 
Why Capcom have chosen to prioritise these two over Hagar has always been strange to me. It seems to me that here in the West, huge meatheads have always been portrayed as the epitome of masculinity and take lead roles in many action orientated movies. Rambo, Conan the Barbarian and Terminator are all great examples of this. However, in Japan, big meatheads have generally not been valued or glamorized as much and more often than not, they are relegated to supporting roles rather than being main characters. All you have to do is look at the honeybee in within Final Fantasy VII to see how the Japanese sometimes culturally look at the bodybuilder stereotype. So perhaps there is a chance Hagger was sidelined in Street Fighter in favour of Guy and Cody due to him being less popular within Japanese culture, a culture where they have always seemed more keen to push scrawny teenage lads as the stars of 99% of their RPGs for example, rather than action movie-esque stars like Hagar. Even if we look at a pivotal point in beat-em-ups, in Japan they had the skinny school lad known as Kunio starring in Kunio-kun, where in the west the game's name was changed to Renegade and Kunio was replaced with a much more masculine looking Rambo-like lead. Does a lack of Mike Hagger in Street Fighter relate to any of this? Or am I simply being over analytical? Another obvious conclusion that I have yet to attempt to draw could be more along the lines of protecting Mike Hagger's novelty. After all, he is arguably the star of most of the Final Fight games and features in all of the Muscle Bomber games, so maybe Capcom felt it would be oversaturation placing him in all the Street Fighter games too. But then again, with there being no new Final Fight games for 15 years and no new Muscle Bomber games for a staggering 26 years, that answer no longer answers that question. So I guess we can only continue to speculate why he is absent in these games, wondering if he is ever going to show up as a playable fighter within any Street Fighter game. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the mad story of Mike Hagar. Let me know in the comment section why you think Capcom have chosen to leave out one of the most important characters who exists within the Street Fighter universe out of the games as a selectable fighter. It is perplexing really. If you got enjoyment from this content, over on my Patreon page I have some exclusive beat em up biopics you may want to check out, covering Blaze, Ash, and even one of my personal favourites, Skullmageddon. All these videos can be seen by everyone currently back in the exclusive content tier and above. In addition to this, I have a new wrestling channel where we are looking at bizarre wrestling characters such as Goldust's other gimmicks which is locatable on the channel known as Top Hat Wrestling Man. I also have an audience led live stream on Twitch every Tuesday and Saturday where we discuss all sorts of gaming topics. So I like to think I have a range of content on offer for just about everybody. Finally, I would like to give special thank yous to my current channel patrons. So special thanks go out to Sebastian Vellas, The Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heo, Paulo Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey I. Marsh Sr., Capcom vs. SNK, BXL Goffin, Ryan Dinged, Evan Border, Philip Nanth, Azura Kai, Keith Ferguson, Joaquin Morella, Michael Calix, Ago, Jordan Durant, Angel Light 85, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Prince Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Kid Anime, Justin Wang, Am McNamara, Hermes Gonzalez, Instant Gratification, Monkey Man, Shovel James Bishop, JB, Michael Hall, Wesley Sang He, Felatio, Langston Miller, New, Brian Barry, Sarah Powell, Vlamic Rene, Marino Liga, Chris Cool, TOG Driver, Adrian Hannington, Bernard NG, Richard Stu Stewart, Dan Van Dammit, Louis Viant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Retroverse.com, Casey Wright, Synth Spaces, I, Andrew Bazanski, Alex Summers, Gunther Hendricks, and everybody else who backs me on Patreon. I'm a eternally grateful. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Yeah. Cheerio.